Puerto Escondido is an incredible town on the Pacific coast of Mexico in the state of Oaxaca. The weather is consistently gorgeous and I was super lucky to be able to live there from December 2020 to March 2021. I quickly fell in love with Puerto Escondido and you'll see why in this video as I'm going to take you through the ultimate guide. All the things to do, to eat, where to stay and anything else you might want to know. So whack out your Google Maps ready to make some stars, get comfy and let's get stuck in. I'm going to start by running you through all the beaches in Puerto Escondido because I'll be referring a lot back to these throughout the video. Puerto Escondido is blessed with seven completely unique and stunning beaches all right in town. Starting on the far left you have Playa Bacocho. Bacocho is a humongous gorgeous sandy beach but the waves can get pretty rough so not the best for swimming. You can snorkel by the rocks and see loads of fishies. They have a turtle release center where you can release baby turtles every day at 5 p.m. There isn't really any shade or shops on the beach just a couple of private beach clubs. From Becocho, you can walk across a few rocks to Playa Coral. The only other way of getting to Playa Coral is through Via Mexicana Hotel, where you have to pay 70 pesos for access, but that does include two beers or one beer and one hamburger. Playa Coral is an absolute hidden gem. The water is calmer and great for swimming most of the time. It's a much smaller beach, but has a real abandoned island feel to it, especially since the water park that's part of the hotel literally is abandoned. Then you have Playa Caresalillo, most people's favorite beach in Puerto Escondido. You can only access it by about 200 steps down from a small road off Rinconada. The view at the top of those steps is arguably the absolute best in town and the beach itself is gorgeous. The water is clear and calm. You can snorkel by the rocks on the right hand side and see so many fishies. There are a few very rustic little shops on the beach and you can pay to use a sun lounger in the shade. Garazilio is also a popular place to surf for beginners. You can rent a board or pick up a surf lesson down on the beach. Playa Angelita is a really popular spot for locals. It's a lovely beach to swim at because the water is calm and clear. There are lots of shops and restaurants around right on the beach, but there are always boats parked up and it's always the busiest, so for this reason, it's not my favorite. And attached to Angelita, you have Playa Manzanillo. This one is slightly quieter, but the water is just as clear and calm and there aren't any boats. There is some nice snorkeling by the rocks on the left-hand side. There is a few restaurants here with sun lounges that you can pay for, or they may say you have a minimum spend at their restaurant. These are more expensive, but it's a really nice chilled atmosphere down at Manzanillo. Then you have Playa Principal. This is another beach that is super popular with the locals, and it's also where most boats hang out in Puerto Escondido. There are loads of shops and restaurants around Principal, so it's great for socializing, but would never be my go-to. Then finally, you have the big daddy of a beach that is Playa Zicatella. It really is absolutely huge. On the north side, you have loads of shops and restaurants on the beach, which are super nice and popular. You can swim here, but I wouldn't necessarily recommend it as the waves are choppy as hell and it's not always safe. In the middle is where the waves get really darn big and they host world-class surfing competitions here. I do not recommend surfing here if you are a beginner. But then on the south side of the beach is the La Punta area. The waves are smaller and more manageable. This is popular with beginner and intermediate surfers. You can take classes or rent boards. So if you're visiting Playa Zicatella, just know that you'll get a different experience depending on whereabouts on the beach that you go. Puerto Escondido can be seen to be split up into these main areas. Bacocho Rinconada, Centro, Playa Zicatela, Los Tamorindos and La Punta. You can stay in any of these areas but each has its pros and cons and would be suited to different people. So let's start with the Bacocho Rinconada side of town. The best part of living here is your close proximity to arguably the best beaches in town. I stayed in Bacocho in an Airbnb for one month and it was perfect. You are not far from all the shops in Centro, you are close to the in Canada Strip which has a nice restaurant selection but I had a scooter which made my life much easier. If you don't have your own vehicle your only other options are really taxis or walking. It's a bit spread out for walking everywhere and getting taxis everywhere would frustrate me as well so that's something to bear in mind. Then you have Centro. This is likely to be the cheapest option of all. Another pro is that you have all the shops and local restaurants you want on your doorstep. If you prefer an international cuisine there aren't a ton of options in Centro so you'd need to get a taxi out for that. You're also not super close to any beaches, so if beach is a priority for you, Centro may not be the best. There is a great hostel though in between Bacocho and Centro called Tower Bridge Hostel, which although I wouldn't rate the location, it is really good value as it's cheap, has a good vibe, and they organize loads of tours and activities around towns for the best prices. Then we have Playa Zicatella. I spent two months here after my stint in Bacocho, and you would not need your own vehicle staying here because most things are on your doorstep. 
restaurants, bars, shops, the beach. If you do want to head to another part of town, taxis come literally non-stop, so it's not an issue. I stayed at Las Olas Hotel in Zicatella and the weekly rates are the best value in town. You get your own big private room with bathroom that gets cleaned every day for 450 pesos per day. Right on the beach in a great location, it has a pool as well. The Wi-Fi is a bit shit, but that's okay because you are a stone's throw away from Selena Hostel and Amarisa Cafe, which have really good Wi-Fi. And if I wanted to stay in a hostel in Zicatella, this is where I would stay. Los Tamarindos is in the middle of Zicatella Beach. And although there are lots of accommodation options, it is super quiet. I would definitely want my own means of transport if I lived here because it's quite isolated from any action other than the crazy surfing on the beach. I think if you were staying in Puerto Escondido long-term and you wanted somewhere kind of cheap, but really peaceful and quiet this could be a good option obviously in the grand scheme of things you aren't that far from the action just a five to ten minute taxi ride away but it's a bit too far to walk la punta is the cool backpacker part of town it's the least developed in terms of the fact half the roads are still made of dirt but it's the most developed in terms of the gentrified restaurants cafes and bars it's by far the busiest and most social part of town for young tourists in the evening the beach gets packed for sunset but it's a nice vibe nonetheless i would want to stay in la punta if i was in puerto escondido for less than a week and I wanted to make friends and party but it's like a bubble if you stayed there you probably wouldn't explore other parts of town which would be a real shame it's typically more expensive in La Punta as well so in conclusion if I was in Puerto Escondido for a crazy fun time I wasn't staying long I wanted to make friends and be social I'd stay in La Punta if I was in Puerto Escondido for a long period of time with my own vehicle I'd stay in Bacocho slash Rinconada if I were there for a long time without my own vehicle I'd stay in Playa Zicatella if I was in Puerto Escondido with a super tight budget and I wanted the cheapest accommodation, I'd stay in Centro and I'd stay in Los Tamarindos if I was a bit of a social recluse. Let's talk about getting around. Having your own transport in Puerto Escondido is really nice but not essential. You can rent scooters quite easily but unfortunately it's not cheap at all, it's like £10 a day. What I did is I bought a scooter and then sold it after I left. I actually managed to sell it for a profit because I knew how in demand scooters were. It's strange because everyone wants to buy a scooter in Puerto Escondido but finding a decent one that runs well that doesn't cost an arm and a leg is quite difficult. I bought mine for around £350 and sold it for around £400 three months later but like I said having your own transport is not essential. You can of course walk places that are close by, you can get a taxi which are cheap. A typical 10 to 15 minute journey across town costs around 50 pesos which is about £2. Alternatively you can catch a local bus. These look a little bit like horse trailers and they run regularly up and down the main road so walk to the main road and literally just flag one down. It costs just eight pesos, which is about 30p for one journey across town. There are so many things to do in Puerto Escondido. I love it so much. You will never be bored in this town. So firstly, you can go horse riding to hot springs. You get your own horse and you trek through the Mexican forest, across rivers and through amazing landscapes. You end up at these hot springs where they have mud pools, which you lather onto your body and then wash off in the river. You can relax in the hot springs as long as you want and then you ride your horsey back to where you started. You can take a boat ride across the Manialtepec Lagoon after the sun sets to swim with the bioluminescence plankton. If you've never swum with plankton before this could be a great place to do it. It's a super cool experience and if you can I recommend organizing this for yourself when there is a new moon so you're going to have the best effect. You can go dolphin and whale watching. You head out on a boat at sunrise and the first half of your morning is spent spotting dolphins and even whales just off the coast of Puerto to Escondido. You can even get out and try and swim with them. They'll probably swim away but you know you can at least try. Also from Playa Principal you can do a banana boat. Could be fun. You can release baby turtles into the ocean every single day at 5 p.m on Pecocho Beach. It costs 100 pesos. The volunteers tell you a little bit about the conservation they are doing there before handing you a baby turtle in a coconut shell which you then go and set free to live its best life. You can go surfing. Puerto Escondido is world famous for surfing. The world-class athletes wow everybody at competitions on Playa Zicatella so you can be a spectator or give it a go yourself. Both Playa Carazelillo and La Punta are great places to learn and get lessons. You can skydive, you can attend a temezcal ceremony which is very common in Mexico. I attended one in Tulum, it's like a hot dome sauna which you sit in and you chant and you set your intentions and purify yourself. If you can't tell it's not exactly my vibe but people really enjoy it. You can do a yoga class, I would go to the one upstairs in Spirulina restaurant which was every day at 10am and cost just 100 pesos. You can do a sunset booze 
cruise. When I was there, this happened every Friday night, leaving from Playa and Helita. They essentially just pile you onto boats. You bring your own booze, you bring your own speakers and music. They drive into the middle of the ocean and you have a party. That's it. Simple concept. Probably does not pass any kind of safety regulation checks, but it's a good time. You can go kayaking in the mangroves around the Manialtepec Lagoon. We did this with Eco Adventures and it was absolutely awesome. It felt more like a kayak safari with all the wildlife we were seeing. So peaceful, so beautiful, highly recommend. Close to Rinconada, there is a spot called Mirador Las Tortugas. This is such a gorgeous place to watch the sunset. You sit up on the rocks and it's super peaceful. There is a Facebook group called Hikers of Puerto Escondido and like three or four times a week, they do really nice afternoon group hikes. It's a perfect way to escape town and do something a bit different. The closest popular waterfall from Puerto Escondido is called Cascada La Reforma. It takes about 90 minutes to get there, but that's another thing you can do that's just a bit different and somewhere to escape town. If you would like to go on a walk somewhere that's actually in town, there's a really nice coastline walk that you can see as a dotted green line on Google Maps. It starts in the corner of Playa Principal and it goes to Mirador Sueño Posible. It's quite rogue at points and you have to do a bit of scrambling to get over the rocks, but it has some great views. Local fishermen like to perch along the walk as there's lots of rocks. You can expect to see so many fun crabs. It's also not very busy. I feel like a lot of people don't even know about it. So that's just in town. There are also a bunch of weekend trips that you can take from town. And here is just a few of them. First, let's talk about Chacawa, which is west of Puerto Escondido. You need to take a bus in the direction of Rio Grande. Tell the bus driver you're heading to Chacawa though, and they'll make sure you get off the bus at the right time. You're then going to catch a taxi down to El Zapotalito, and then a boat over to Chacawa. The boat ride really is epic. You go through mangroves and there is wildlife. It really is an experience in itself. Then Chacawa is just chef's kiss backpacker haven. It reminded me a little bit of Rincon in Colombia, if any of you have been there. Those kind of sleepy beach town vibes, but better. The beach is really big and is hands down the best surf beach I've ever been to. We had a group lesson and I caught every single wave. They were just perfect. There are a bunch of restaurants and very rustic accommodations in Chikawa, but don't expect any luxuries. Most of these places you can't book ahead, so I recommend just rocking up and picking one. In the opposite direction from Puerto Escondido, you can visit Mazunte and Zipolite. You've got to catch a bus heading east to Pachutla, tell the bus driver where you're going, and they'll drop you off at the correct part of the main road. You then catch a taxi down to the coast. Mazunte is a one-of-a-kind beach because more often than not, you can literally see whales frolicking in the ocean just from when you're sunbathing on the shore. The town itself is also super cool with a bunch of food and accommodation options. And Zipolite is just 15 minutes down the road and is a super chilled laid back beach. It's actually a nudist beach, so don't be too shocked when you are confronted with an array of naked people. The beach is lovely though, and there are some nice little shops and restaurants too. Now bringing it back to Puerto Escondido, let's talk about some of the best places to eat. I'm going to categorize this by cuisine and vibe. So for your classic Mexican dishes, the best place to find street food is on the Adaquín strip. You have all the classic street food options here from tacos to esquites and other amazing places to get tacos. I have to talk about Pepe's fish tacos in La Punta. These tacos are gourmet and they are absolutely jam packed. Everyone in town talks about Pepe's fish tacos, so you have to try them at least once. I also really love Pinch's tacos. They have one in Rinconada and one in La Punta, and it is a taco restaurant where you order the main filling and then you go to the counter to add your own toppings. Always really, really nice. If you find yourself in Centro, definitely check out the JP Bunker as well for some good quality, good value Mexican dishes. And an honorary mention to La Marinara, which is right at the north end of the Zicatella beach. It's quite hidden and is a gorgeous little restaurant on the beach, which does the most amazing tortas. They have a marinated raw fish one which is to die for and a prawn curry one which is so unique but so good. I would go here for a late lunch or at sunset. Possibly the consistently most popular cafe restaurant in town though is El Cafecito. They have one in Rinconada and one in Zicatella. There is almost always a queue outside in the mornings and lunchtime. It basically has a really big menu with decent quality Mexican options for really reasonable prices and service is always great in here as well. Other cafes and and good daytime eats are Amarisa Cafe. They have one in Zicatella and one in La Punta. This was my favorite place to go and work, have a coffee and some reliable Wi-Fi. Sativa in Zicatella is on the beach and has some really nice food options and is chilled in the daytime. Same with Aguasala, which is right next door. They have gorgeous decor if you are wanting to eat somewhere and get a nice Instapic at the same time. Elephant Garden and Spirulina in Zicatella are the best places to get healthy food. Loads of veggie and vegan options here too. Coco Fam in Centro has a similar 
the vibe but I never managed to actually eat here as it was always full because there isn't so much seating. And then in La Punta I recommend Karma Bowls for a really nice pre or post surf smoothie bowl. They have a bunch of different options for this and Cafe Ole has some really nice coffee and other options too. If it's the afternoon or evening and you're after some civilized coffee and cake you can go to El Cafecito or Dolce Tierra in Rinconada. And my favorite sunset restaurants are La Marinara, like I mentioned before, but also Espadín, which is a fancy restaurant that looks over Caracelio Beach. I do recommend making a reservation for Espadín though, as this one can get quite booked up. So now let's talk about some dinner spots. If you are wanting wings, the absolute best place to go in town is Chupalitas in Rinconada. They are small and not super busy, but I think they are the most underrated restaurant in Puerto Escondido for the quality of their wings. If you want a burger, some classic town favorites are Turtle Bay in Rinconada and then Cactus and Marijuana which are both in Zicatella. If you want to be eating healthy for dinner you've got Holy Moly which is a tiny quite hidden vegan restaurant in Zicatella. They only serve one meal option every night. It's different every night and you don't know what it's going to be but it's always delicious and a nice surprise. Close by in Zicatella you also have Spirulina which is open for dinner and has lots of healthy options and then in La Punta you have Pioli which is a health food restaurant. They have lots of veggie and vegan options. Too. If you are feeling a bit international and want to mix things up, Chicama is arguably the most popular restaurant in La Punta and they serve high quality Peruvian food. The vibe in there is also super fun and a great place to drink, eat and socialize with your mates. And then another favorite of mine is El Sultan, which is a Middle Eastern restaurant in Rinconada, which has two for one falafel wraps every Wednesday, so don't miss out on that. If you want some Italian food, Benditos Italiana near Arequin has some really nice options for good prices. And in La Punta, you have Mundaka which is a pizza restaurant with great pasta too. It's always really busy in there but for a good reason. The vibe is great and the cocktail bar is fantastic too. If you are a fan of sushi like me you are in luck because there are a bunch of options in town. In Rinconada you have Sushi in Rinconada. The owner is really lively and friendly and even sometimes wraps live in the restaurant which is random but a good time. The sushi is really good there and well priced. In Zicatella you have Samurai Sushi which is really good quality. The vibe is often a bit dead in there which is a shame because the food really is great and I think they're underrated. I highly recommend going on Thursdays because they have a really good deal on their sushi rolls. I think it's two for 160 pesos which is a great value deal. And then in La Punta go to El Arbol which is a food park and they have a really nice sushi stand in there as well. In fact I recommend just going to El Arbol in general for all their other options as well. It's a really great social vibe in there and they have a bar as well. As for bars and nightlife my favorite place to go for pre-drinks was Esmeralda Bar in Zicatel which is a pool bar. Before dinner time they are much quieter so you can always get a pool table which is free to use when you buy drinks and the drinks are actually super reasonably priced. They do great two-for-one deals on their cocktails and playing pool is more fun than just sitting down and chatting in my opinion. The closest thing to a club is Skanda. They have one in Zicatella and one in La Punta and this is where you would go to really let your hair down late at night. There is a really great atmosphere at Alaburga which is a burger restaurant but the main reason people go there is for the live music nights which are really really fun. As well as El Arbol there is actually another food park in La Punta called Food Market. They have two for 100 pesos cocktails here so it's a great place to start off your fun night out. Bikini Bar is in the middle of La Punta and it's a small bar but really fun vibe and has great cocktails. And finally also in La Punta but a little more hidden and less known is a place called SOS Bar. They have ridiculously cheap drinks here for their happy hour but also just in general but also they have loads of random games and things to do in the bar to keep you entertained like foosball, table tennis and darts so it's a fun place to come for pre-drinks with your friends. There are so many more great places to eat and drink in Puerto Escondido that I haven't mentioned in this video because I don't want to keep you here all day but if you have been to Puerto Escondido and have any further recommendations do leave them in the comments for other people to check out. Thank you so much for watching if you've managed to make it all the way to the end of this video. Please subscribe if you haven't already. I made a bunch of vlogs while I was in Puerto Escondido so feel free to check those out to see what what life was really like whilst living there. In my next video I'm going to be talking about the contrast between living in Tulum and living in Puerto Escondido so look out for that one and I will see you then. Bye!